So why do I take photos? Is it to capture and never let go of my memories? Or the people that I love? Or is it about me and <laughs> remembering who I am and who I was? So why do we take photos? I want you to think about that while we talk about this camera. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal to Tech. Today we're reviewing the new Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo camera. This is a brand new product from Fujifilm that I've been looking forward to testing out for months. The Instax Mini Evo currently sells for about $200 and should be available worldwide in the next few days. A brief disclaimer before we get started. Fujifilm did send me this camera to test and review. However, my opinion is my own and Fujifilm did not pay me to review this camera, they did not create this video, nor did they have any say in its content whatsoever. They, in fact, they have not even seen this video until right now when it's been published for everyone. Right inside the box, you get a USB micro B cord to charge the camera, a small strap to attach to the sides, and the camera itself. One thing to note, you do need to purchase the film separately. A two pack of film that gives you 20 images will cost approximately $14. My first impression of this camera is that it's light. It's very, very light. And that's mostly because it's made of plastic. The lens itself, however, is made of glass. Looking at the front of the camera, you have your on off switch, flash, little selfie mirror, front shutter release button, and charging lamp. It's not actually glass, but it's reflective plastic. This is too small to see if there's anything stuck in your teeth, but large enough to properly check your position in the frame of a selfie. On the lens itself, Itself is a rotating dial that chooses the type of camera lens effect to use. And the most interesting thing about all of this is this button right here. You see that? This is the shutter release button to take the photo. However, there's also one included in the normal place you'd expect to see one on the top right side of the camera right here. So basically you've got two different choices of button to take your photo. Also on the top, you have an effects reset button, a cold shoe mount where you can attach a light and another dial here on the left side that allows you to select what film effect you want. Now for those of you Fujifilm professional camera users, that's the dial that allows you to set the film sims. And lastly, on the top is the coolest feature of the camera. It's a pull lever that causes your camera to print your photo. On the right side you have a one quarter inch mounting hole and on the left side is the slot where the printed photo comes out. Now the bottom of the camera gives you three items. a slot for a micro SD card, a USB micro slot to charge the camera and update the firmware, and a reset button to restore the camera to its factory settings. And finally, on the back of the camera, you have your three inch LCD screen, three function buttons, and what should look familiar to all Fujifilm users, a menu OK button, and a little round selector that has four additional buttons depending upon which side you press, top, bottom, left, or right. Pressing right or left left gives you a settings menu with additional items. Here you can control white balance. You can't set a custom white balance, but you can select from a few presets, such as shade, fluorescent, incandescent, and so forth. I found that auto white balance works well enough on this camera. You can also set the camera to a macro mode which actually I didn't find made much difference either way. The flash can be adjusted to always on, always off, or auto, and you can set a self timer for either two or 10 seconds. And most importantly, you'll find an exposure compensation setting where you can adjust either up or down by two stops. Now this camera is designed to do four main things. First, you can use it as a regular digital camera. So you take the shot, right? And it gets stored on your micro SD 
card. And then you can take the micro SD card out, put it into a computer and further edit your photos. And here's something else. If you don't have an SD card, the camera itself allows you to use its own internal memory and it'll store up to 45 extra photos. Those photos can then be transferred from the internal memory of the camera to the SD card as well. Now, the second thing you can do with this camera is to print a photo that you've already shot. Now, it's not like, for example, this Polaroid from 1977, right? Where as soon as you take a shot, it spits out the photo. That's not how this camera works. With the Evo, you take your photo normally and then you browse through the photos using the LCD screen on the back until you find the photo you like. And then when you do, you pull this lever to print it. Now with printing, obviously you need some film. To open the camera to insert the film, you use this little slide switch right here. It's actually not the easiest thing to get open, which is good because if you happen to open up this door while you already already have unused film loaded in the camera, you're gonna let light into the camera, which is gonna ruin any unused film that you have. So make sure that you only open this backing up when you're out of film. The camera has a countdown indicator on the LCD screen that'll show you this. Once you select the photo you wanna print, simply pull the print lever. The photo will print out the slot on the side and it takes about 20 seconds. Once printed, I found that it takes a few minutes for the image to fully develop and appear. Now the third thing that you can do with this camera is to pair it with the Mini Evo app and transfer the images that you've printed over to your phone. For some strange reason though, you can only transfer images that you've printed already from the camera. In other words, you have to print an image first from the camera, even though it's stored digitally, and only those images can you transfer to your phone. I'm not sure why that is yet, but it is a limitation as of the date of this video that I wanted you to be aware of. Now, speaking of the Fujifilm Evo app, in fact, speaking of any Fujifilm app, if you've ever seen my regular Fujifilm camera app review video, I just got back from Home Depot where I had to buy not one, but two cans of wall spackle to fix the holes in my studio wall where I was beating my head against in trying to get this app to work. Well, the app for the Instax Mini Evo works very well. This this camera connected to the Evo app on my smartphone in seconds every single time without a problem. It has a live view, although there's obviously some lag, and you can shoot remotely with it. You can also perform basic image editing functions and so forth. And finally, we come to my fourth and favorite thing that this camera can do. You can transfer an image that you shot on your smartphone over to this camera and print it out. It's easy. In fact, it takes just seconds. This opens up a huge amount of possibilities, being able to print from your smartphone and pictures that you've taken with this camera. This is now a good time to talk about image quality. This camera uses a 1 5th inch CMOS sensor and it has a fixed focal length 28 millimeter lens with a minimum focus distance of about 10 centimeters that goes on to infinity. Its ISO range is from 100 to 1600 and the shutter speeds are from about one quarter of a second to one eight thousandth of a second. Now the exposure compensation options of up to two stops are very important with this camera. In fact, I ended up darkening my exposure compensation setting to about two thirds of a stop for most of my shots. And this helped a lot, especially outdoors, when I had noticed that if I didn't do that, I would end up with blowing highlights and losing color depth. I pretty much kept it in the two thirds of a stop under exposed exposure compensation position all the time. Now, as far as images, the camera saves them as a JPEG. Each JPEG you get off of this camera is very small with a little bit over one megabyte each. And this gives you an image that's 2560 by 1920 to work with. Interestingly, the camera also spits out a little sidecar file of sorts, but not the standard sidecar files that are used in Lightroom, Photoshop, or Capture One. Rather, they're simple, 
CSV files. And as far as I could tell, these would be entirely useless for any major third-party editing program. They just show the firmware version, date, and effects and film sims used. You can make all of your usual post-production slider adjustments, and considering the price of the camera that includes a printer, I was surprised at how I was able to bring back some of the detail in my highlights. Here is an image I shot with a $1,000 iPhone 13 Pro. Here's the exact same image I shot with the Evo. By dragging a few sliders, I was able to get the image a lot more similar to what I captured with the iPhone. Overall, the image quality is about what you would expect to get from a $200 camera. You can recover some detail and get decent enough colors if you do two things. First, make sure that you adjust your exposure compensation accordingly by lowering it to about a stop in camera. And second, making sure that you don't use any of the creative lens filters and effects. Instead, shoot with the normal lens profile. But here's the thing. Few people buying this camera will be dumping all of their images into Lightroom and fine tuning the shadows and the highlights. Or, you know, sitting here in this studio like this and shooting color charts. This camera is all about capturing the moment and and printing out a photo and all the fun that comes with that. And to that end, Fujifilm gives you the ability to mix and match both film simulations as well as with lens effects. And so because there are 10 different film sims and 10 different lens effects, you have up to 100 different looks that you can mix and match together on the camera. For example, you can rotate the top dial right here and select Vivid. Then you can rotate the lens dial and select Light Leak. And now you've got might leak vivid and so forth. Now the prints that come out of the camera are good enough to share and have fun showing off. They're much better than the original Polaroid prints from the 1970s. In fact, they're smaller than the Polaroids you may be used to, but they definitely get the job done and they are fun to use. What I found most interesting was that when you print images that you shot from your phone, those printed images come out really, really good. Even if this thing were nothing but a printer, it would be worth the price to be able to easily print a photo that you took on your phone. Here are two images I took. The one on the left was shot with the Evo camera and the one on the right was shot with the iPhone 13 Pro. Both of these were printed by the camera. And speaking of lens effects, there are a few weird ones on this camera. You've got color shift and light leak and mirror and double exposure and half frame. Although I must say that mirror is the weirdest. It definitely didn't make me look flattering, I'll tell you that. Now, as much as I love this camera, there are a few things that I think Fujifilm should seriously consider for a version two. First off, there's no viewfinder, only an LCD screen on the back. And I found myself constantly wishing that I could look through a viewfinder, right? Especially outdoors in the sun, when the glare from the sun would hit the back rear LCD screen and make it very difficult to judge my exposure. Having a viewfinder built into the camera would have been really helpful. Secondly, I would love to see the one quarter inch screw hole also put on the bottom of the camera as well, and not just on the side. This would make it easier to lock down the camera for horizontal shots on a tripod. Third, it would be great to customize this top button right here so that you can use it to quickly jump to the self timer or the exposure compensation mode. You know, a programmable button, that would be helpful. And finally, I wish there was an option to prevent the camera from dumping all of those CSV files on the SD card. You know, those weird sidecar files I mentioned. They're kind of annoying every time I go into post-production and import them into Lightroom and have to delete them. I'm sure this could be a accomplished in a firmware update. So, where does a camera like this fit in in 2022 when image quality from your phone is definitely so much better? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but for me personally, I think this camera came along at the perfect time. A smartphone with all its email and messaging distractions can pull you out of the moment as you're trying to capture it. But a camera like this, much as you know the old Polaroids of years past, makes taking and printing images a big part of that moment. And the best feature of all is that you can combine the two and print out photos that you shot on both. After more than two years of everything going on in the world, having to scroll through digital feeds, Instagram, social media, now feels really dated and passe to me. People are ready for a change. Seeing someone's face light up when they get handed a real photo, I just shot of them. 
human connection. We need it now more than ever before. Honestly, I love this little camera. Fujifilm, thank you for making this at a time when it's needed now more than ever. I look forward to seeing where you go with future versions of this. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful, or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I am going to be signing off now. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see all of you in a new video next week. Take care. <laughs>